Joining the dispatch today is Call of Duty professional player for the Minnesota Rockers. We've got Gon RX. Adam, where are you joining us from today? Are, are you in Minnesota? Uh, unfortunately not. I'm still in my hometown in uh, Maryland right now, but Minnesota, I'll be moving out there about, uh, I think, right after New Year's. I was going to say, I was curious like when that kind of process begins. I know kind of uh, earlier we were kind of talking about how the game has been going up to this point, but first things first, before I even ask you anything about Modern Warfare, about how the team is doing, I've always wanted to know this. Where does the gamer tag come from? What, what is the tale behind GoderX? <laughs> so, I mean, every time someone asks me this, I always tell them the same thing. The RX part I've had ever since I started gaming, I literally don't know where it came from. It literally just popped in my head. And um, the God part, when I joined Sinister back in Call of Duty Ghost, uh, I was going to change my gamer tag to Sin RX, but some dude took it already. I was like, all right, crap. So I just thought of something. I was like, let me show him God in front of it, and it just happened to stick ever since. So, okay, I, I was always curious. Like, I've always wanted to ask that question. Like, I think ever mm -hmm. since Advanced Warfare, I was like, you know what, the name God RX. Like, I've thought about it. I, I've just never really kind of come to the conclusion of, of where the gamer tag tale kind of came from. Right. Um, but, uh, but talk to me. How was the off season for you? Right. I know for a lot of people, they say it was stressful. I've heard a few people say it was the easiest time that they've ever had. For you though, uh, was it a stressful time at all? Uh, for me, I have to go on the side with the. Uh the more easier side off season. Uh, I, I literally, it was actually one of the best off seasons in my opinion. I got to spend time with my friends pretty much every day, just being outside. Um, I actually went to North Carolina for my cousin's wedding uh, for about a week and a half. So it was a lot of fun. It's been honestly stress-free. Now, why was Minnesota the ideal choice, right? Was there anything in particular that made you want to be here over other possible options? Um, for Minnesota, I feel like, when we uh, when I first started talking with them, they were definitely uh, gave me a I guess a more um, home kind of a vibe with them, like one big family. Uh, and just what they talked about, they they honestly seemed like they they understand like what they wanted to go with, like what direction they wanted to. Um, just all around, just good vibes, and it's it's definitely like uh, right away. It's one of the places I definitely wanted to play for. Now, you guys are obviously, you know, a new team, right? You have Silly and Assault who have played alongside each other before and obviously won a world championship back in, in World War II. But for the most part, the remainder of this team haven't really played with each other all that much. Um, is there really anything that you guys have kind of gone over beforehand? Has there been any, you know, practices? Have you guys been trying to maybe overcome what could be the lack of chemistry that this team has? Um, not really. We just, we all know our uh, talents and our roles and all that. And we just felt like this would be, this would, this is uh, the best possible roster we can come up with that has a chance of winning multiple events, even like the world championship at the end of the season. But um, we all just, we all just talked about it. And like, we all, we all, we all know what needs to be done. And like, we just need, we all know that like we have to work together to improve as a team uh, th throughout the season. Now, what are your thoughts on roles at this moment in Modern Warfare, right? We've been seeing, what, M4s, we've seen MP5s, MP7s. From what you've seen, how are the roles kind of working, and, and maybe what is the team looking like for Minnesota in terms of the role department? So roles so far, I've, I've heard various things. Uh, obviously, some maps I've, I've heard are going to have more subs and assault rifles on the map, and uh, just vice versa. Um, for our team... Um, we have Ace and Alex as like the main subs, pretty much, and uh, me and Assault are going to be the the two ARs on our team, and Silly is obviously like the flex in between. So, and we're all comfortable with our rules too. So we know, or I guess we know like what our rules are and how like what to do with them. Or pretty much like if like if it's perfect for us. Now, one thing, and kind of on the the topic of your roster, right? One thing that I really like about your team is not just the core, you know, kind of starting five that you guys have got, but it's also the substitutes that you guys decided to implement as well. How do you see guys like Exceed and Tiny possibly working alongside you guys? Uh, especially Tiny. Um, everyone's seen him as like one of like the, I guess like top S and D players, and um, we picked him up for that reason as like one of our our main subs to help with our uh, S and D game throughout the season. And so far, we've been playing with him uh, in the in the, um, some of the uh, CMG and GB tournaments, and it's honestly been like really showing, especially for me to be honest, at the beginning of the game and like just learning fast from, especially from him. And uh, exceed, I've, I mean, I've seen him play at champs. I mean, I haven't heard from him much beforehand, at, like before champs happened, but uh, seeing him play, I was like, this kid, he definitely has potential, and uh, he definitely has the slaying power, which honestly will help if 
if uh, he needs to be brought in. Yeah, I got to say, like, for me, at least, you know, I've been able to kind of watch both of these guys. Well, I'd say Tiny probably a little bit longer, kind of toward, for me, at least the beginning of World War II, kind of maybe even right. before that. I, I, he kind of came on my radar, and as you talked about, like a, a very high-tier search-and-destroy player, uh, even in the you know Canadian scene as well, he's kind of rose up in, in those reigns. And Exceed, for me, has definitely kind of been more of a, of a fresh name for sure. It's kind of been someone who recently came onto the scene, obviously with Sicario at Champs. It, it kind of showed what could be there and what talent could exist. But mm. uh, i got to say, when I heard those two names, I was instantly super excited because it was one guy in Tiny who I felt really deserved an opportunity to at least be a substitute I think uh, and then obviously someone like Exceed who I think might have been swept under the rug potentially if teams didn't look in the right direction so I was really excited to see that you guys kind of at least for right now in terms of the sub department um, you know gave it to two guys who I think will actually really be worth their weight uh, when it comes down to the bench positions and that could be implemented in the future. Um, now a lot of people would say at this early point you know in the game that the current team to be looking out for is the Dallas Empire, right? They've looked great in, in terms of their online tournaments up to this point. But from a player's point of view, how much weight does that really hold? Does that really kind of look like I would say from a player's you know kind of perspective, how do you view that current conversation of, oh yeah, the Dallas Empire are looking like the best team in the world at this moment? Does that really hold a lot of weight with you guys? Or is that just something that kind of, you know, goes off on the on, on the the back of the mindset? I'd say it's just in the back of our minds. I mean, it's the begin. It's it's a brand new game. I feel like anyone could win these early search and destroy tournaments, but I feel like it really comes down to the first event of the season about who can be the best team off the off the rip of the game. This is all it comes down to right now. Now, on topic of the first event, of course, Minnesota has announced they will be, in fact, hosting the launch weekend of the Call of Duty League. That's going to be on January 24th to 26th at the Armory in Minneapolis. How does it feel, right? How does it feel to be the team that kicks <laughs> off the first event of franchising? It's definitely going to be a, be a hell of an experience. Uh, we actually saw the venue, and uh, everyone's will, uh, everyone's in for a good treat. Um, it's it's definitely going to be a, a different experience from different or from past events knowing that we're playing in front of our home crowd in front of like in uh, in the big stadium it's it's gonna be a good one now do you guys feel maybe and i know it's early obviously but at this point do you guys kind of feel what could be early on pressure to be the first ever home team uh i mean me personally and then probably for the rest of the team uh, we don't feel any pressure at all i mean it is it is our home it is our home turf but it's just like every event we played at before like we know we know what we have to do sure now, it's obviously no secret that the preseason, rather the preseason rivals, at least on Twitter, uh, with the Minnesota Rocker have been the Toronto Ultra, right? It's the, it's the, you know, the kind of the, the battle of the North, if you right. will. How do you feel that you guys currently stack up against a roster like that? Uh, if it came down to us playing against uh, Toronto Ultra, um, I'm blatantly honest, we're going to win that. Uh, I, I just see us as the better team when it comes to that certain matchup. Okay. Any any players that maybe you're uh, you're eyeing out from the Toronto Ultra that could maybe cause a few problems? Uh, definitely Looney and uh, Medals. If I had to say, I thought all, uh, Medals from last season was beyond good. I think Looney too, for me at least, from when it kind of looks upon from the Ultra side, I think really will be a, a key piece. And I, like I, said, I, I cannot mm -hmm. wait to kind of see that major matchup between the Ultra and the Rock. Or who knows, maybe it could be a matchup that happens uh, in the first event. We'll have to see. But regardless, I think that's going to be a fun one to watch. We talked about oh, yeah. all the different storylines. People have talked about the Battle of LA, you know, the old versus the new. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the Battle of the North, I think, kind of fits up there nicely. Um, now, I want to point out yourself a little bit here for a moment because you really started to explode toward the the end of last season. I want to throw out a few of those numbers really quickly. All right at Anaheim, 1.23 in Hardpoint, a 1.56 in Search and Destroy, a 1.40 in Control, and at Champs, what a 1.33 overall with a 1.6 in Search and Destroy. I mean, these numbers are unbelievable. What do you think was the main cause of such a phenomenal end to your season? And do you feel like you can kind of pick up where you left off in Black Ops 4? Uh, I feel like what really came down to me uh, pretty much just going off in those two events, I feel like it was uh, with my old team, they definitely um, gave me or gave me the strict role with the Maddox and they just, they, the coach sender helped me a lot with my gameplay and just, we really just like honed in on what I needed to improve on and just different and just go over different situations, all that stuff. And just, I feel like spending numerous hours, like especially in S and D from the numbers you yeah, you just, you just mentioned. 
uh, just our different strats and what we needed to do, like in every scenario, I feel like it, it honestly just paid off in the end. Do you think that those you know numbers in Search and Destroy specifically? I, I know with Modern Warfare it's early, but people have talked about it's a very tactical game. Search and Destroy seems to be kind of uh, you know a major target for a lot of teams out there. Do you think that it will be easy to translate that over? Because of course we talk about Black Ops Four, many kind of assumed or rather labeled it as you know just a, a quick TDM. It's a one life type TDM. Do you think in Black Ops Four that maybe a, a talented player in S and D can kind of translate over to Modern Warfare, or do you think it's going to take a little bit for those kind of two games to mesh? Uh, I feel like if you are good at S and D in the past, COD, especially last Call of Duty, I I feel like you'll be fine in this in this game. I mean, me personally, I've for some reason I've always thrived in S and D on land for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, I I feel like me I'll be I'll be good when it comes to that game mode. I feel like other players would too if they excelled in S and D before. Sure. And what's your stance on Modern Warfare at this moment? Do you think it has potential to be a great Call of Duty title? Oh, I 100% agree. It, it it definitely has the potential. Why is that? So, I mean, uh, I mean, right now it is a good game, but if they fix up stuff like uh, the just bringing back the normal mini map to start off with, I mean, that's always been in Call of Duty, and I feel like that kind of just threw over like everyone like, uh, a a curveball. And um, honestly, adding dead silence in in this game, I feel like people that camp a lot. It, it like it helps them just be able to sound horn. I feel like that should not be a thing whatsoever. Granted, mm -hmm. I do think the dead silence being the, the um what what are the whatever the word is uh the um can't think of the name right now. I'll call it like a like a little, yeah like a I guess a power up. I don't know. And, right, and, right. Yeah, but I feel like that can create like a lot of cool plays and all that stuff. But in the long run, I feel like making dead silence actual perk will help. Mm -hmm. And also uh, balancing up, balancing out some of the guns because right now the M4 is uh, pretty overpowered in my opinion. But um, it just they just fix the small things, and this game definitely has potential to skyrocket. Now, I want to ask you one last thing quickly about Modern Warfare. A lot of people's kind of major opinion on the game so far has been around, hey, it's got a great basis to it. The only issue, and this is a lot of people's opinions, are the maps. The maps are the issue. There's not enough. Obviously, there's been rumors and leaks about how there could be more introduced later on. But regardless, mm -hmm. what's your take on the maps right now? Do you think that they really are kind of a root cause for some of the issues? Um, I would say... A couple of them, not all of them. I I enjoy some of the maps they have right now, but I, I do agree expanding or adding some DLC maps and expanding the map pool would would definitely help a bit. Um, I mean, some of the maps right now, I feel like there's just too many spots you can just camp in or you just, you right. just have to worry about, and I don't know. That's that's just that, that's just too much for me. <laughs> Obviously, this doesn't relate to comp, but we talked about it kind of uh, earlier about the the shotguns and the claymores that have maybe been right. uh, a little bit, I would say, infuriating is, a, is, a, is the proper word when it comes into pubs. But uh, also, in terms of Modern Warfare, what's your thoughts, right? Obviously, it was announced that they will be utilizing uh, three game modes when it comes down to the rotation this year. We've got Hardpoint, mm. Search and Destroy, and Domination, a game mode that we haven't seen since Call of Duty Ghosts. What's your opinions on it returning, and uh, do you think it could be an interesting game mode to throw into the mix? Uh, Domination Returning, I feel like it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, I do wish, however, though, they made it to where back in Call of Duty Ghosts, where you can actually neutralize the flag and not have to worry about capping it fully. I feel like that adds more, uh, more competitive to it. But this game, or bringing Domination in, is, uh, is honestly like the root for Call of Duty Competitive, I would say. Because it's been in Black Ops 1 and past titles as well. But playing that will be a lot of fun. I feel like it, uh... The new uh, refresher, rather than just playing the simple, the simple hard point capture the flag S and D type stuff. Sure. Well, well, Adam, it's been a pleasure having you on. It's uh, it really is amazing to see where you are right now. I remember what maybe it was a year, year and a half ago, uh, we had a conversation on Twitter about not giving up and kind of progressing through. And I think it's uh, it's amazing to see where you are and the fact that you are leading a team like Minnesota when it comes to franchising. It's fantastic, and I wish you and the team the best of luck. And I hope to see you guys at the season opener. Great. Right. Thank you so much, Lennon. And also, thank you for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely, buddy. Well, that's got our ex-professional Call of Duty player for the Minnesota Rocker.